morning. My name is Chandra Delaney and I am here today to speak on behalf of the Dollar Six. And the Dollar Six are six men who are being persecuted and um, being tried maliciously for um, the charge of riot when all they did was cover up their cell window. The Dollar Six are being persecuted for being whistleblowers for having the audacity to stand up for their constitutional right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment by being subjected to torture, food deprivation, food and mail tampering, unsanitary conditions, and many other human and civil rights violations. They filed complaints and followed the proper procedures. Their peaceful acts were met with intentional violence. Just like in Ferguson and everywhere else, there is a rampant corruption and lack of accountability in law enforcement and corrections. A uniform does not make you above the law. Torture and violence toward any human being is a crime. Covering your cell door is a misconduct, not a felony. This case is less about a riot which, by the way, is impossible to do in solitary confinement, but more about a cover-up and retaliation. This trial is going to re reveal the inhumane and torturous conditions of solitary. It will also reveal the lawlessness that has been created by a subculture of humans who work in these dungeons and make a livelihood out of abuse of others. The guards who abuse the men the administration that allowed that abuse, and the courts that, is, uh, that assist in pushing this bogus case through the courts should be on trial, and not the dollar six. Here, here. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Chandra Delaney. Right. She's the mother of one of I'm the mother of Carrington Keith, one of the dollar six. Mm. You, hello. I'm Derek, one of the dollar six. You know, and um, just talking about this, it makes you feel some type of way. Um, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's just, it just hurts. Like, you know, I'm not, a, I don't hate all authority, but I just, like, I'm, I'm a strict opponent to the time and say, you know, pressures of authority that at their um, discretion, you know, the individual just had to you know, can you do right and wrong, but they just rather do wrong, you know what I mean? And what happened to us, it affected my psyche when it, you know, so bad that it just, it got me messed up out here and being out here in society, you know. The fact that this case went on for five years, they know it was no riot. We pressed charges against them. The Pennsylvania State Police turned around and we pressed charges and had them press charges against us to cover up for the sauce. You know, and turn it into a riot when you can't riot, you know, inside your individual cell, you know, about them, you know, Committing a person who commits suicide, they kill that person. That the climate became so overwhelming that it affected my psyche along with other dudes in the tear, defecating my food on Thanksgiving, you know, stuff like that. Urinating my my um coffee. These are the people that have authority. You know, we trust these people to you know to, for our lives and stuff in there. And they mess with our mail, sabotage our mail, read our mail out in the public. You know, to our family members tell us we got to visit when we come out in shackles and handcuffs. Beat us down, throw us off the tears, put us back in the cell, bloody. Don't call no nurse, and you know, don't all them things. I'm out in society, but I'm doing all right. But all them things affect me, you know. And now this particular case, you know, that been going on for five years, you know, they, it's not they're not giving us justice, you know. I feel some type of way. Y'all got skills, you know. What I'm saying I'm, I'm affected by this, you know. Do you think you're gonna get a fair trial? Yes, I, I believe in the people. There's power in people. And I've right. seen all these people around me, you right. know, just because Luzerne County is corrupt. And they gave, you know, and, the, and even the people of Luzerne County, seeing what was going on with the judges situation and stuff like that, I believe in the people. I believe that. I believe that. You know what I mean? And I, at first I didn't have no hope, but I believe that, you know, that, that there's going to be justice. I believe that. Global Women's Strike and uh, part of the Dallas Support Campaign. And we're very proud of the stand that these men have made um, and to end the abuse and violence. But at the same time, we're appalled 
that the fact that they called out the rampant abuse and violence in Pennsylvania prisoners, and instead of investigating the abuse, the authorities have turned on the whistleblowers and they're killing the messengers. And that's, you know, Pennsylvania has a bad history. We, uh, Charles Grainer of Abu Ghraib okay. got his start here as a Pennsylvania prisoner guard. Um, SCI Dallas has a consent decree against it. We just learned that uh, 16 members of uh, prisoners at SCI Camp Hill have gone on hunger strike to oppose the conditions, the unsanitary conditions, the lack of food, and other uh, atrocities that they face. So uh, we have a saying in the Global Women's Strike, mothers, daughters, partners, wives, fighting for our loved ones' lives because these are our sons, our brothers, our partners that are inside. And so many people inside have not been convicted of any violent crime at all, but in fact are in for things like parole violations, drug offenses that are about to be decriminalized, um, for, and, and a, a shocking number inside for uh, not being able to pay fines. Is their t sentence supposed to be torture? Torture remains illegal in Pennsylvania, and we're here to make sure yeah, it stays so that way. Thank you. Your name again, just really quick. BB Jones, Global Women's Club. Thank you. Oh. Okay, I'm Eric Jensen from Payday Men's Network. Uh, we're a network of men internationally who work with whistleblowers and refuse nicks. Um, we have a saying, refusing to kill is not a crime. In this case, we also say, refusing to be killed is not a crime. These men, these six men took a courageous stand and, and it's our duty to support them. We owe them a lot. We owe whistleblowers a lot to expose the truth about how people are treated, treated in prison and outside, in other institutions and in, in society in general. They often risk their lives, their jobs and livelihoods. These men in this case literally put their lives on the line to stop torture and we must stand behind them. And I also want to say, um, we also oppose the recently passed Revictimization Relief Act, um, which is designed to silence prisoners like the Dallas Six. And just today, there was a lawsuit filed uh, against this act, and we're gonna take other actions against it to, to repeal this horrible act. Thank you. Uh, we have somebody from HRC, Teresa. Can you give a statement? So today is not just taking a stand. Today also identify prisoners who are sometimes lost and people who are forgotten about. But today we will not forget, nor will we ever forget, what has happened in the case of the Dallas Six. We're not going to forget and we're not going to let anyone else forget. We will be up here. We will be back, in, back here to back them up and support these people for this brother to stand up and testify against what has happened. He's one of many. He's just the one that has the voice right now. And for those who doesn't have a voice or are unable to speak up for themselves, we will be that voice. Free all prisoners. What's your name? Teresa Schultz. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there was there was another person, um, Isaac Sanchez. He is part of the reason that the Dollar Six uh, happened that day, because these same guards that did what they did to them took him and put him in a restraint chair for 16 hours when you you're not supposed to be in this chair longer than two hours. And the only reason they put him in there is because he complained about someone not getting their food. So that was that's what they did to him. And after they did that, that's what made the Dollar Six say, you know, enough is enough. That's why they took the stand. Even just this past week, I also work with HRC, and we get hundreds of letters weekly from prisoners. Just this week, what comes in? A letter. 16 prisoners on a hunger strike for the same reasons we're talking about here today. For neglect of food, not being able to get showered, just simple basic things they're asking for and they're being abused 
and they're using um, the food and showers and, and physical, you know, getting it to come out of your cell. They're using that as a torture. And so these people are just asking for basic rights, just as the dollar six was, because everybody, everybody has a right to live without cruel and unusual punishment. And that's exactly what torture is. And that's exactly what happened to the dollar six. And I, I would like to add one more thing. In the case of retaliation, my son came from his home jail to SCI retreat. While he was at SCI retreat, they damaged and, and um, destroyed his legal evidence that he was to use in court here today. This is what they do. They continue doing the same things over and over because they think that they are above the law and that they will not be held accountable. But they will be held accountable. Right. They That's will right. be. All right. Very good. Did That's anybody it. else have a statement yeah. that they wanted to give? I just wanted to add that one of the things that one of the things very striking about the Dallas Six is there's six African American men. Yet they went, they took this action because first, the thing, what two things that really prompted it. An, an older white man with, with uh, mental health issues was coerced into suicide by the guards. This affected them tremendously, seeing that body bag. It still affects me. Seeing that body bag come out. And then there was a Latino young man who was held in the restraint chair for 16 hours. These two, this was an act across racial divisions standing up for all of our rights, and it's very important for that point to come out. I just want to, just because a person's incarcerated, that don't mean that they should be treated inhumane. That don't mean that the guards have, a, or, or, or the sheriffs, or just the authority have the right to just abuse their authority and treat them wrong. You know what I mean? Everybody get deserve, you know, being punished. They get deserve, you know, they, they, they deserve to be treated, you know, inhumane. That's, that's all I want to say, you know? Last minute, but we're going to um, say something. Chandra said something, and Derek has said something. Chandra. All right, now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm here to um, help the Dallas Six out. I guess to um, achieve victory or whatever. And be innocent. That's what I'm here for. So we got it. What's your name? Uh, Isaac Sanchez. Sanchez. Do you want to say what happened to you, Isaac? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the whole thing? Well, maybe about the chair. Yes. Oh. Well, Some um, of the stuff that was going on. Well, what uh, happened to me was um, I was abused and tortured on the uh, extraction. They came to my cell and uh, Beat me up, punched me, kicked me, shot me on my neck with electro shots and shield. They stripped my clothes off with the um, like a box cutter, left me naked and put me on a chair for like 20 to 30 hours. They uh, starved me, turned my water off, things like things of that nature. And uh, then a Dallas sick, they did like a um, a protest the following day. And it was just a call on like the um, got the sheriff departments, um, any lawyers that can help, public defenders, HRC, the media, and things like that. But the uh, I guess the uh, the COs didn't want to go that route. They just took it upon themselves to uh, I guess torture and use corruption and oppression instead of uh, taking a, a good route. I mean to um, better the situation. Bruce, I gotta go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I drove up today from Philadelphia to support these men and support this community of concerned families and women and sisters and.
and brothers here because in my tradition, the Jewish tradition, we teach justice, justice shall you pursue. And for whatever reason, see, they might have been in prison. We don't live in the Middle Ages anymore. We live in the 21st century. Human rights are a right for everybody that is in prison. The right to have decent food, the right to be, have medical care, the right to be treated as a human being. Indeed. And that is what we are here for. Yes. We are the 21st century. We must have justice in our prisons, in our courts, and in our communities so that we will have a just left, society. Thank you very much for being here with us. Your name again? Lynn Iser. Okay, and which establishment are you from? I'm representing myself. Okay. Okay. L Y N N E. I can give you a card if you like. Sure. Yeah. I'm also a member of the Jewish community, which is what has compelled me to be here today. Oh, and there's a number. I mean, we're elder activists. And we're elder activists, which is really the work that I do. I mean, there's a number of I'm Quaker representing my. Good to meet you. Mark is the one who, who lives in Lancaster. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs>